Hey everybody, some gadget guy here, and let's get this out of the way right now. If you're shopping a phone like the Kyocera Brigadier, you're probably not quite as concerned with its content creation capabilities as you are its insane durability. Still, this thing does have a camera, an 8 megapixel shooter capable of 30 frames per second 1080p video, so let's see how it performs during our real world test conditions. As a general pattern, throughout this review, the Brigadier is capable of some really nice video for a phone around $400 unlocked, but the app Kyocera has developed to control the camera will more often than not get in your way. This is one of the flinchiest autofocus systems I have ever used. It really does have a mind of its own and is painfully slow at registering a tap to focus command. You'll often tap, wait for it to refocus, get impatient, and tap again, repeating the cycle ad nauseum. Once you do get it to lock onto your subject, the tiniest movements from you or your subject will often cause the camera to start hunting and breathing to relock focus. Once we finally wrestle the camera into focusing, we see pretty decent color saturation and good detail. Reds oversaturate, and there's the same tendency to overexpose, common with most phones, though exposure changes are also really twitchy. Any subtle changes or differences in your scene will result in severe pulses of exposure compensation. This can have a disastrous effect on your video, which I'll show more of in just a bit. On a wide street scene, the phone doesn't seem to be struggling as much with focus, but it never really calms down. It reminds me a lot of how eager and twitchy the HTC One X used to be. Cars driving through the scene elicit immediate focus pulls from the camera. Colors are a bit muted here, and I wish we saw a little more vibrance in the blue of the sky and cars driving through. This overexposure tends to clip highlights like white cars driving through our freeway scene. I could use just a bit more dynamic range here. While I absolutely adore Kyocera's noise reduction for phone calls, I actually took a call right after this shot and the person I spoke with could not believe I was standing on a freeway overpass. It's somewhat destructive here while shooting video, and we get an ugly, warbling, underwatery sound from the constant drone of vehicles driving through the scene. The Brigadier does have a setting for software image stabilization, but I wouldn't recommend using it. It creates a much choppier looking video and seems to cut the frame rate. As such, our walking test is pretty bouncy and shaky. No surprise here, and given the price point this phone sells for, performance is about mid-pack. The zoom is terrible. Don't use it. I really don't have anything else to add. It's pretty awful. Now, macro distances are where the camera struggles to lock focus the most, but it's here where I discovered the Brigadier's fatal flaw. A lot of phones will scale the frame rate to achieve brighter exposure. Fewer frames per second means that each frame can last longer and soak up more light per frame. The Brigadier, unfortunately, seems to have zero limits for how far it'll scale the frame rate and it has an amazingly low threshold for when it will start slowing the frame rate down. These flowers are in a shadow, but it's still a fairly well-lit scene. Yet the Brigadier is shooting at 19 frames per second here. And watch what happens during our exposure test, moving from a dark scene to a bright scene and back to a dark scene. The video becomes much more fluid as we approach afternoon sun, and then becomes a slideshow again moving back inside. with a brief burst of speed by these white pillars. So how low will the frame rate go? Five. Five frames per second. It's not even really worth going through the rest of my nighttime tests. The camera is working way too hard to try and overexpose for a dark scene, and it's resulting in five frame per second video. There were no settings I could adjust to improve this behavior. Shooting 720p, trying to adjust the exposure, the ISO, nothing seemed to work. And if any Kyocera fans out there have a solution for this, I would love to see it. I mean, look at the light trails from cars driving by on the freeway. That's crazy.
Even more frustrating is the live view from the camera app is actually quite nice right before you start shooting video. Smooth, if a bit noisy, but good detail and color while slightly underexposing. Everything we'd want while shooting at night, but the second you push the record button, you end up with this mess. The experience of shooting video on the Brigadier is one of the most frustrating I've ever encountered. The only phone I've ever completely given up on and was unable to complete a camera test was the Ative S Neo running the original Windows Phone 8 build. This Kyocera isn't as bad, but it's really close. With a little practice and patience, photos look pretty good for a camera in this class. However, the combination of flinching focus and twitchy exposure changes will make video a much more difficult proposition. We're wrapping up our review on the Brigadier, and it is actually shaping up to be one of my favorite phones of the year. But the camera performance is certainly not one of its best features. As always, folks, thanks so much for watching my videos, sharing my videos, subscribing to my channel, dropping me all of those amazing comments down below my videos. I love the conversations we get into. Hit that thumbs up button, and I will catch you all on the next review.